Welcome, Lighthouse fam, to 2023, our first episode of the year. I'm here with my good friend, Danny Silva. Danny, how's it going? Good. How are you, sir? Very good. Very good. Today, you don't want to miss this episode. We're going to be talking about how to get prepared to buy a house in 2023. We're going to give you three very important key points. And before we get started, if you have a chance, can you like this podcast episode? Can you share it with somebody? It's really important to us that you share this with other people who may benefit from what we're doing here. So it gives us more reason to continue doing this. Let's get started. First episode of 2023. I know, I know. Excited. Yeah. All right, let's get this thing going. You have a new lead who just reached out to you, said, Danny, right. I want to buy a house. Um, I have no idea what that process is like. How do you, how, what do you tell that lead? How do you get that process started? Well, first I will tell them that that is a great question um, because you have to seek knowledge, right? For anything that you do in life, first first thing that you have to do is seek knowledge towards that subject, which uh, the process of purchasing a house is not easy, as you and I know, because we've been doing this for a very long time. And um, we understand that, you know, you can't just take the advice from the cousin or from the from the sister's boyfriend, cousin, that, you know, usually are in to, to say something. So the first point I wanted to get out there, usually a lot of people will say, you know, look, you gotta, you gotta get pre-qualified and because you don't, you know, anything that you're going to do, if you're going to buy, you got to make sure that you can afford it first. However, the, 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 the advice that I give my clients is to, to seek for, um, um, an agent uh, or a broker, a real estate agent, because they understand the overall, um, um, what what goes in what in you know what goes into a real estate transaction before you even get pre qualified? I think you're gonna get the most information out of real estate agent before you go into um, how to get financed and 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 whatever we're gonna talk about after that, right? Uh, and I'm not, I'm only not saying here, even though Lighthouse Group and we does we do a fantastic job. Uh, we want to be upfront with our clients, right? We want to, we, we usually, we tell them, look, you know, there's tons of people. State of Connecticut has what? 16, 16,000 agents. More now, it's about 25, yeah. 25,000 agents. So there's 25,000 people out there that do the same thing that we do. So what I would say is just go. Do they do it as good as we do? I, I, <laughs> I understand that. I understand. As, as much as I want to say, you know, you know, just work with us. No, we want people to to go out there to interview uh, uh, some agents to see who they feel comfortable, who brings knowledge, uh, who 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 they think that's going to be a better fit for them throughout a process. A real estate transaction could be easy, but it could be sometimes a nightmare, yeah. um, to say the least. So. Um, First things first, the first thing I would do is definitely look for a real estate agent, somebody who's going to guide you in the right direction and give you the support that you need throughout that transaction. Yeah, that's, those are very good points. And I, I agree with you that uh, a person should look for an agent first because um, when you talk to a mortgage agent, they have all the knowledge when it comes to financing, right? We barely touch anything of financing because it's not our job. We don't understand it fully. We leave it to the banks and the lenders and the brokers uh, to to deal with those. Um, and then, of course, the attorneys get to do all the paperwork and, and forms and um, making sure that the property is being transferred correctly. So they take care of that part of it. And then we're right in the middle. So we learn a little bit about the finance part. We learn, you know, a lot about the inspections. We learn a little bit about the closings and everything that the attorneys have to do. And of course, we know our share of this transaction, which is the showings, the offers, the negotiation uh, part of it. So we're, I tell people all the time, a, a, real, a good real estate agent is a glue that keeps a deal together. Right, because right. you're a good uh, source of information, and then you're also a um, you're a, a liaison between um, the client and the attorney and um, and the inspectors, and so you you you're talking on behalf of your client with all of these other professionals in the field. 
Right. Right. Yeah. 100%. So it's, it's very important that when people are coming to you for help or to me for help, that they understand that our job is not just to open doors. It goes way beyond that. Way we're beyond. Ed- way educators, beyond. right? Yeah. We're teachers. We're coaches. Yeah. yeah. Right. I was actually having a conversation with a client yesterday, not a client, an, another agent. We just had a closing and she was telling me about like how it, the transaction was smooth because because we were on the same page at all times. We were doing like the F you all the time. F you, wait a minute, it's follow up. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the, one of the main things, you follow up. You know, a lot of agents, a lot of people will step back when that, when that, when uh, an offer is accepted, whatever the case may be. No, we are always following up with everything. But, you know, transitioning from seeking the knowledge, now the person has, a, 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 you know, has chosen a good person that's going to, you know, hopefully Alex Camargo or, or somebody that will, you know, high standards like that. Um, what's the second thing that they have to do after finding somebody who's going to help them with uh, with the whole transaction that's a good point that brings us to affordability right we can talk about buying real estate all day but if we can't afford it it may not be for us right now it's very important that people look for agents even if you're not going to be ready for another six months or 12 months so you know exactly what you need in order to be ready now and knowing what you need really needs the assistance of a mortgage agent right Our recommendations in common are work with local people, right? Work with local lenders, local brokers, small banks, uh, as much as you can, because these people rely on their local reputation in order to get more business, right? It's not like they're getting leads from all over the country. They're getting local leads, right? Working with locals. Right. So that's a very important part of it. So we need to get pre-qualified, right? You come, you seek a real estate agent, you get a a good overall knowledge of the process, and now you got to talk to a lender, Right. So that process is fairly easy. Most lenders can send you a link. You can do the whole process online without talking to anybody. Uh, I like the process where you actually talk to the lender. Sometimes you may be able to come into their office. Sometimes you may be able to do a Zoom call. Sometimes, uh, depending on their flexibility, they can meet you at a coffee shop or or anywhere else uh, and come to you. Um, so they can gather more details. The better pre-qualified you are, the better job the lender does pre-qualifying you, the better, the less of a chance for problems to happen along the way, right? Because sometimes you can go to one of these online services and you can lie about some numbers just to get a pre-qualification letter. And you think you're doing good just so you can go see a house, but actually you like the house and you want to put an offer and it turns out that the numbers that you put there are not real at all. Yeah, now you're so heartbroken. Now you're heartbroken. You've already spent money doing inspections and, and paying for appraisals and all of that. And then you got to start from the beginning again. Yeah. So our advice is talk to somebody local, right? This process of getting pre-qualified takes about half an hour to one hour, and then you're good to go. You know exactly what you can afford. Very important. No new credit lines. Don't open any new credit cards. No new car payments. None of that, right? No no new Corvette? No, no. no. No? After you buy the house, you can do whatever you want. Before that, just make sure that you really um, lessen your debts. But even before you touch your debts, talk to a mortgage agent, right? We don't have access to, to your credit. We don't have access to your bank accounts. We don't want access to any of that because we understand that's a mortgage agent's job. Right. But when you actually sit down with them, they can tell you, you don't have to worry about this car payment because you only got six payments left. That's not going to count against your uh, debt to income ratio. Uh, but this other $800 car payment a month, we may have to do something with it. Right. And oftentimes people have to sacrifice in order to like for the greater good. Yeah. Do you want a brand new car or do you want a house? Yeah. You may have to sell that car, you know, with an eight hundred dollar car payment. An eight hundred dollar car payment may bring your affordability down by about by close to two hundred thousand dollars. Right. Right. So before you could buy six hundred, now you can only buy four hundred. Is four hundred where you want to yeah. be? Does that buy you a nice house? Right. So that process is important. And I think I want to go the extra mile and talk to our self employed. I'm actually gonna look into the camera. If you're self employed, this today is Somewhere around January, uh, whenever this video comes out, if you're self-employed, you really have to talk to your accountant and your mortgage agent before you file your taxes. For affordability purposes, Correct. Right? Okay. So why is this important? Sometimes you may want to uh, write off um, 
uh, depreciation for an asset, uh, uh, for a vehicle, or whatever the case is, just so you can minimize your tax liability at the end. Uh, but your mortgage agent may tell you, hey, if you do that, you're not going to be able to qualify for the house that you want to qualify for. So this conversation right now, it's super important. Otherwise, you may have to wait for another year. Right. Yeah. Right. So again, self-employed, talk to your accountant, talk to your mortgage agent before you file your taxes. Right. So that's my uh, that's my pep talk there. Um, And then we finally move into our last point, which is the shift. Right. Let's talk about uh, actually on this third point. I want to bring out a couple of things within the third point. One is the shift. Right. It is no longer a seller's market anymore. Right. Houses are starting to sit for what it used to be before COVID 30 to 45 days on the market. Uh, there's no, you know, I, I would still see um, uh, offers being accepted that it's um, over listing price, but the property has to be like mint in, in really good condition in the in a desirable area, something of that nature. Um, but it's no longer just a seller's market anymore. Buyers are starting to get maybe not the upper hand, but there's there's negotiations going now. Uh, there's more to choose from. Not that we have a great inventory, but uh, because of the rates, and we're going to talk about that in just a second, um, a lot of buyers aren't pull, pulling the triggers like they were before. So No more FOMO. No more FOMO. No more <laughs> FOMO. And... Uh, you know, and, and, and there's, there's, um, there's ups and downs to that. Right. So basically a lot of people, you know, let's go right in, you know, we understand that rates are, um, not what they used to be, but then again, you were buying something, uh, at a 3%, three and a half, whatever the case was, but you were offering a hundred thousand dollars more than the the house was worth or $50,000 more. And now that the rates are, um, you know, in the fives and the sixes, but you don't have to spend the extra hundred thousand dollars. You don't have to spend that extra fifty thousand dollars. So it's worth taking a look. Take a look at the numbers. Yeah. See if it makes sense. If the numbers make sense, then you know. I was watching an episode with Dave Ramsey the other day. Don't wait. If the numbers make sense, buy the house. If the rates come down, you refinance. Right. Um, same thing with um, investors. If the re- if if the ROI, if the return on the investment makes sense purchase it you know if you know real estate has been like that forever and it, it you know it is going to be like that it's ups and downs so um um i mean th- those are the couple of things that i wanted to touch on the shift and if numbers make sense go for it refinance later if you can um houses that are sitting on the market for over 30 days it doesn't mean that the house is a, you know it's a bad property or anything like that it's just the it's market, market, it's a different market. It's a different market. Um, do you want, is there anything you want to say about that? No, and, and I think uh, you, you, you brought us to a good point. Um, we had people buying, let's say, let's take a $500,000 house, right? Um, you had people offering five fifty, five eighty for it just to take advantage of a good 3% rate. Um, if you're going to stay in that house for a long time, great. But now you actually have an opportunity to, okay, $500,000 house, if you can still afford it at a 6% rate or 6.5% rate, 7, whatever you name it, um, and you can still buy it for 500 maybe even a little less because that house is sitting on the market for a little longer now, you end up winning at the end. Yeah, yeah. And you have room now if, in case, like, whenever the rates come down, refi. Yeah. Right? And uh, just to go back on the second point of real quick, that's why it's crucial for you to understand, uh, for you to choose a, a good, good um, um, finance person to work with. And I go back to interview a couple of people, you know, talk to a few people, see what the, the programs that they have. I just had a closing with, uh, you know, uh, state of Connecticut. There's a few lenders that they're working with that my client got twenty five thousand um, dollars as a uh, what do you call that? Um, uh, grant yeah. towards uh, down payment, whatever it was. So he, he was, he was, spo- he in, in his, his race were in the sixes, which were, you know, if we're talking about through out history, that's when rates were okay. Norm- yeah. they, were, they were normal. Right. Yeah. So yeah, 
um, I think uh, we can wrap it up with that, right? That was, uh, yeah. I mean, 15 minutes uh, with with great knowledge there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it, I think, overall, we have to prepare our buyers, uh, f- help them, help prepare them financially, help prepare them emotionally, right, psychologically for this whole process, um, but also remind them, yeah, it's a hurdle to go through this process to buy a house, but we have to refresh and we have to make them understand that it's the best decision that they're making, the best financial decision that most people are making in their lifetimes, right? Do you want to rent for the next 20 years and then have nothing at the end? Or do you want to buy a house now and be able to have all the equity of that house in 30 years from now, right? So the process is still very much worth yeah, it. Yeah, 100%. It's a little bit of you have to endure a little bit of, uh, of a process now, right? Um, a little bit of a headache now sometimes for people to get ready financially and all of that, but something that's gonna continue to pay itself off in the next 30 years. Right. Yeah. 100%, that's a wrap up, you know, for, you know, just think about this. One last thing, rents are still the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Share it with someone. Happy New Year, 2023. Uh, 2023, just a quick note here. For you to succeed, for you to be a better person, all depends on you. What you're going to do with your life, what you're going to do with your time, who you're spending time with, what you're reading, what you're watching. So keep that in mind. We'll be back next week with some more great content for you. We'll see you next time.